Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm looking forward to sharing with you poetry from uh, most recent issues from Scar's Publications, including the most recent issue of Down in the Dirt magazine. It's the no, October 2022, volume 200 issue. This releases a book titled, How to Become an Octopus. If anyone wants to know how to become an octopus, there might be a story in here for you. <laughs> um, I was going to share with you one poem that is included in this book that also when people send me stories about periodic table elements, I have to include my periodic table poetry. So I'm going to start this reading with one poem that not a poem that appears in How to Become an Octopus, but also a poem that appears in my periodic table poetry poetry book. And this book has all of the elements, and this was released before the last ones were named. So you get some insight into Unanactium before it became it got its own name. So anywho, I'm gonna share with you one poem that appears in both of these, and that poem that I hope you enjoy is titled Neon. Walk toward the entrance of the now closed dance club I used to go to every weekend. You see, I'd get in free. I'd get the free weekly newspapers, the reader, with coupons for free admission for girls before midnight. I'd go to the vortex, I'd look for shelter, and only see broken neon signs. It reminds me that neon is common in the universe, but rare on Earth. And the only way we get neon is by liquefying the air, and then actually distilling the neon out. So, I guess it's fitting seeing the broken neon signs of the once popular dance clubs. Knowing that all I can do now, everywhere I go, is just breathe the neon in. <laughs> but I want to close it up from Down the Dirt, How to Become an Octopus, as well as the periodic table of poetry. I've got multiple cameras to be able to show off for multiple people. Um, this is for live feeds and hi everybody who's watching live and I have to show it for regular videos for everybody as well so it gets cut off sometimes but so everybody's got to be happy how can I do it anywho um thank you very much for listening yay for science so yay for science I just saw SpaceX just lay uh shot six astronauts into space to go to the space station and then I saw that their launcher rocket was actually scheduled and landed on a platform in the middle of the ocean so they could reuse it. I mean, I watched that this morning on the news before coming here. My mind's officially blown. That was just the coolest thing. I'm sorry, that totally was. Anywho, sorry. Sorry about talking about science and news and today's activities. Um, but I do want to share with you one, two, three, four more poems that are in this toward the back of the book that also, and I'm looking at Oriana right here, I'm looking at and in, in Chinese right here, but it is smaller. I might share that with you because these four poems I'm going to share with you also exist in the cyberwit.net Janet Pepper's poetry book that was really stirring in Women's History Month, Shattering the Glass Ceiling. So yes, the four things I'm going to share with you appear in both, not just one, but both of these books. Try to show it off any way I can. How for all of my different camera people, you guys are crazy. Um, but uh, the poems I'd like to share with you including this first one, is titled Oriental. Years ago, Chinese women bound their feet with cloths, forcing them to retain the foot of a child. The smaller the foot, the higher the class, the more helpless the woman, the more she needed a husband to care for her. It was normal for the daughter to cry and cry at the thought of hurting her feet so, of being unable to walk, of crippling herself. But the mother knew better. The girl would never find a suitable husband if her feet were like those of a servant, at least a working servant. It, handcuffs are like swatches of cheesecloth slowly wrapping layer upon layer upon layer. The tears falling land in her lap into a pattern 
as the daughter sobs and rocks back and forth. That actually was read by Wayne Allen Jones at the poetry contest, I believe, in 2009, and he won first place. <laughs> and I just say that to fill some space. That was in Chicago. Sorry about that. Because Oriental, which is in this book, it's in both of them, but in two different pages, it also exists in... It's hard to be able to show it off because the pages are so left-centered in this book, but it also exists in this book that way as well. Um, the next one I'm going to share with you is actually a poem that is translated into Hindi as well. And I think I'm going to show that translation before I read the poem to you because there are just so many poems here and so many books. This is a poem that somebody was talking about recently on a webpage post after the release of How to Become an Octopus. They were in love with the poem in this book of unmarried women and dead bodies everywhere. And it exists there not only in English, because, you know, I gotta, you know, do things for my English peeps, but also in Hindi which is very appropriate for this. So Unmarried Women and Dead Bodies Everywhere also exists there in the book in Hindi as well. So now to read it from the book, I hope you guys enjoy it. This is Unmarried Women and Dead Bodies Everywhere. The Ganges River in India, the most sacred river to Hindus, is the still religiously renowned. But on one day, not too long ago, at one tributary of the Ganges River, they discovered 28 bodies. The local spotted the corpses when vultures surrounded those bodies as they piled up along the shore. Online news sources explain that bodies may have been left there when families couldn't afford a burial. And at those same online news sources, lucky you, you can see the videos of dogs eating the flesh of the dead. But I was there. I read those newspapers as the Times of India came to me daily while those locals discovered more bodies until they found 104. And the local papers explained of the tradition of Halprava. It's a custom in some cultures. When unmarried women die, their bodies are dumped into the river. Unrecognizably decomposed, more and more bodies of unmarried women kept floating to the surface in just a few days in this sacred Ganges River. I kept looking for an explanation, and all I could think was that this river was supposed to be sacred, and I wondered if this is their effort to give these women a family in the afterlife, putting them in a river they call sacred. Because I, I know how they view women in India, cover their skin, they don't talk back, because even though women are treated like nothing by men there, They'd be less than nothing if they're not married. This is the strangest thing, reading these poems about women's issues from the Down in the Dirt book, How to Become an Octopus, because if you want to know how, there's probably a story in here about it. <laughs> and they also, the poems I'm reading, also appear in the Cyber Wit uh, 2023, released during Women's History Month, um, feminism book titled Shattering the Glass Ceiling. Um, this is available through links on Scars of TV, um, uh, from Down the Dirt magazine. This one is available at JanetKuypers.com. But I'm going to share with you one more that appears in, well, no, two that appear in both of them because I like you. And I like my live readers. I should give them a, a wave and say thank you for listening. Um, but the next one I'm going to read for you, I don't know if I should show you the translation for it as well, is a poem that is titled Diane talking about her trip to Mexico City. And that one, let me see if I can find it. You know, if you want to see it en espanol tambien, it is in this book. And as you can find it online this way as well. But do I have it for you? 
I'll get it for you. Um, this is titled uh, Diane talking about her trip to Mexico City. Yes, you can't see it on my thing in Espanol, but you can look online for links to it for the books, and there will be links to the actual translations of this poem as well. Dan, talking about her trip to Mexico City. So, I decided to take a trip to Mexico City. I decided that this was going to be the trip I take by myself. This is going to be the trip where I reclaim my independence. This is going to be the trip where I venture out take on the world, all without the help uh, from a travel companion, from a man. So I went there, and really it wasn't so frightening as I thought it would be. I needed to learn more of the language, but otherwise I got along just fine. Oh, I got lost once, and men in cars kept offering to give me rides. Hey, baby, you want your own private taxi? But one guy told me which bus I wanted, so I was fine. But the man that ran the hotel thought it wasn't safe for me. And he asked me if my parents loved me, if my family loved me, if anyone loved me, anyone at all. Because if anyone did, why would they let me go on this trip alone? And then as I was touring, I went to an old church where there was a saint. And they're considered a saint because their body doesn't decompose. It's not like religion in America, because they had to put the saint's potty in a glass case, because all the people who came to see him would pick off parts of his face as a souvenir. And then, as I was touring, I went to a nunnery, a place where supposedly all the bad young girls were sent to live out the remainder of their days. And they showed me around in this tour, and they said, here are the crosses that the women had to carry when they walked around in circles in the courtyard. And here, over here, these are the crowns of thorns the woman wore. And I looked at the crosses, the crowns, and there was still blood on them. This is how things were, I guess. And they looked at me as strange because I was taking a trip alone. No one in Mexico City understood why I'd want to do this there. No one understood why I'd want to be alone. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm going to share with you one more poem. Count the one that appears both in the Down of the Dirt book, How to Become an Octopus, bum, bum, bum. and it also appears in the Found as a book with translations titled Shattering the Glass Ceiling from Cyberwit Press. Da da da. And I wanted to share with you from within this book that there is also a translation of this. And you haven't even gotten this translation yet. You're like, what, another language? You must be kidding me. Um, this one is a poem that's titled I Wanted Pain. And it also exists in Dutch. I got a Dutch translation. Some Finnish fellow did this for me, so I want a pain. Yes, you can't see it, you can't make sense out of it, but I want a pain does exist with the translation in both of these books. I'm showing it to you in this one because it happens to be bigger, but they exist in both books. And I'm going to share this last poem. Yes, I'll share it in English with you. Relax, it's okay. And that'll be the end of this reading from this book for you. This is titled, I Want a Pain. You screamed at me to pull over. You wanted me to stop. I was driving too fast, you said. So I slammed on the brakes and turned off the engine. As I stepped outside, I wanted to jump out of the car and run. <laughs> run until I lost myself. And yet, I wanted to fall. I wanted to fall to the ground. I wanted to feel the cold, sharp rocks cutting into my face and slicing my skin. I wanted pain to feel good again. But you sat in the car, clueless, the thoughts racing through my mind, through to the nausea, to the surrealism. I stood outside my car feeling the condensation of my breath roll past my face in the wind. It was a constant, nagging reminder that I still had to breathe. 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is plenty long for this installment of readings. It should be 10 to 15 minutes long. You just heard some poetry from the Down in the Dirt, October 2022 issue book titled How to Become an Octopus. If you want to know how, you better check it out. You can find it at scars.tv as well. Scars.tv slash dirt as well. Um, those poems that you read, I read for you in the last edge here were also in the feminist book from Cyberwit Press titled Shattering the Glass Ceiling two in one for this reading for you guys. Um, I am going to come up with a couple more readings in honor of this Tom Woodrup Open Mic Space community poetry that's on North Lamar in Austin, Texas that was stopped because of the pandemic. He appreciates that I'm still doing this here in honor of his open mic because, you know, we've got to keep poetry and creativity alive in any way that we can. So. I hope that everyone is remaining safe, especially my family and friends that still are living in Naples, which is why I had to wear my Naples shirt of Naples Pier, because a good part of Naples Pier was destroyed from Hurricane Ian, which saddens me, so I think this part of the, the, uh, the pier still exists, though, that's in this photo. <laughs> and I have a photo on the back that says Naples and another shot with more birds but I won't show that to you. You get the idea. Anywho, um, stay safe. I hope everyone recovers from everything that they've been going through from the weather. I hope everyone is vaccinated and is safe from any biological forms that might get us in the future. They're coming to get you. And I hope everyone remains creatively cliented. I will be back with another poetry reading in this 1 to 3 p.m. time slot. We've got another read hour to go. Um, thank you again for listening, and I will share more poetry book readings for you soon. Thank you all so very much. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Thank you. I gotta give you one more wave to my live readers and watchers. Thank you again so much, and I will see each and every one of you very soon. Thank you very much.